and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. We're learning about converting analog and digital signals. In the last pair of videos, we learned about ADCs, analog to digital converters. Now it's time to learn the flip side of that conversion and learn about DACs, digital to analog converters. Analog signals resemble smooth, continuous waves and can be infinite voltages within a certain voltage range, for example, 0 volts to 9 volts. Digital signals are typically on or off, high or low, represented by a 1 or 0. While digital signals can represent a number of voltages within a range, that number is limited by the resolution of the device interpreting or producing the digital signal. The world around us is analog, but the technology we use is often digital. So we need a way to make our technology communicate with the real world. To take in information from the world, analog sensors can be used to interpret light, sound, movement, temperature, and more. ADCs can be used to turn those analog inputs into digital signals for processing. There are many cases where output signals can be digital. However, since the world is analog, sometimes those digital signals must be converted back to analog in order to be used. This is when we need a digital to analog converter. A digital to analog converter, or DAC, takes a binary number and converts it to an analog voltage that is proportional to the binary number. To understand how DACs work, we can look back to one of the circuits we learned about with op amps, a summing circuit. This circuit has multiple inputs, each run through a resistor, to one input of the op amp. Another resistor connects the input with the output, creating a negative feedback loop. In this circuit, the output voltage is the inverted sum of all the input voltages. Typically, the resistor values would all be the same. If they were different, it would change the weight of each input voltage in how it affects the output, and the output voltage would not be a true sum. In a summing circuit, with all the values the same, the inputs are balanced. But for a DAC, we actually want the values to be unbalanced. The op amp circuit we need for digital to analog signal conversion is called a binary weighted input DAC. To understand how this circuit works, we should start by reviewing some bits about binary. Binary is base 2, meaning it counts up to 1, then rolls over to the next place. 0, 1, 0, 1. Every time the number rolls over, another bit is added. If we continue counting up in binary and comparing those numbers to their decimal equivalent, we can see which decimal number each place represents. 0, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. You can see that each bit is twice that of the previous bit. In a binary weighted input DAC, also known as an R divided by 2NR DAC, each input has a different resistor value. Since each voltage input represents a binary bit, the resistor values are adjusted accordingly. For example, if V1 uses a 1 kilo ohm resistor, the next input would use double the resistance. So V2 would use a 2 kilo ohm resistor, V3 4 kilo ohms, and V4 8 kilo ohms, just like the values for each binary bit. See how these align with binary bit values? When a voltage input is pulled low, that bit outputs 0. And when the voltage input goes high, that bit outputs a 1. All the digital input bits are simultaneously applied to the DAC, meaning the circuit can interpret a whole binary number all at once. The differing resistor values give each input a certain weight, which translates to evenly divided voltages at the output. You can see that as the binary number counts up, representing input voltage changes, the output voltage increases consistently. The number of voltage steps is defined by the resolution. The resolution is set by the number of bits, which is set by the number of inputs. Adding more inputs increases the resolution. With this stack, as the resolution increases, a larger variety of resistor values are needed. Due to the manufacturer's tolerance of the resistors, the higher the values and the wider the range of values, the less precise they are and the less accurate the signal conversion is. The next type of DAC has a resistor structure that helps improve upon those issues. The inputs in this type of DAC use an R2R resistor layout referred to as a ladder. Only two different resistor values are needed to make this ladder. Connecting to one op amp input is a voltage divider connected to ground. At each resistor junction connects a voltage input through a resistor value of 2R. 
and there's still a negative feedback resistor connecting the op amp input and output with a value of 3R. If I simplify the circuit down, starting with one bit, you can see how the op amp input voltage is divided. Adding another bit, the values change. And again with three bits, and with four bits. Once again, note how the voltage divider values resemble the values of each binary bit. One of the benefits of this type of DAC layout is that two resistor values could be used to build the ladder. Or, for 2R, two resistors could be placed in series to create that value, requiring only one resistor value needed to build the circuit. Another way to achieve digital to analog conversion is by using a process called PWM, Pulse Width Modulation. PWM uses digital pulses, varying the timing or duty cycle between high and low signals. The time off versus the time on defines the duty cycle. By varying the duty cycle and switching frequency, an analog output signal can be produced by averaging the voltages of the input signal pulses. With any DAC, having a higher resolution will yield a more accurate conversion. As we saw with ADCs, lower bit resolution DACs may not keep up with rapid frequency changes, while higher bit resolution DACs can produce a more accurate conversion of the binary digital signal to an analog wave. Something to keep in mind is that once an analog signal is converted to digital, it can never truly be as purely analog as it was, even if converted back. The process of converting digital to analog still uses digital steps, where the signal increases or decreases in voltage ever so slightly. Given a high resolution, comparing an original analog signal and a converted analog signal, the difference is often imperceptible. However, looking very closely at the signals, the converted digital signal will always have steps, even if they are extremely small. DACs cannot create a perfectly smooth output wave as a true analog output. This is where your audio purists love to geek out. All those vinyl record collectors have a point. Vinyl records are embedded with a truly analog signal wave that is played by the record player needle. However, virtually every other form of music recording is at some point converted to digital, and will always have that little bit of compression problem where the output wave will never truly be smooth. Music isn't the only audio application for DACs. They're also used in telecommunication. When you talk into a telephone, the microphone detects the analog signal that is your voice. It is then converted to digital to be transmitted long distances, and then converted back to analog to be played out a speaker on the receiver's phone. DACs are also used for video processing. Many modern TVs and video displays use digital inputs like HDMI that don't require analog conversion. However, on older video displays, you can find RCA jacks with one yellow composite or three red, green, and blue component video inputs that are analog. These require the video output device, such as a DVD player, to contain a DAC. Lastly, DACs are commonly used in motor controllers, converting the digital signal from microcontrollers into an analog signal used to vary the speed of the motor. This is often done with PWM. Well, that's all I've got about DACs. For now. Remember to keep an eye out for my next video where I show you a practical application of using a digital to analog converter. If you have any questions about what I talked about in today's video, remember you can always find me as Maker Karen on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning.